Wilma Rudolph, Polio Survivor Wilma Rudolph was the first American woman to win three gold medals in track and field in one single Olympics. Unlike other Olympic athletes, she dealt with many childhood illnesses, including polio, which left her unable to walk for about five years. Wilma Rudolph overcame polio and faced great challenges as a minority and a woman to become an Olympian. By doing so, she has become a symbol of hope and has showed us what can happen when you try your hardest and never give up. Polio has been affecting the lives of people all over the world since the early 1900s. The virus has spread from person to person and can invade an infected person's brain and spinal cord causing loss of muscle, muscle weakness, slow growth, and in most cases, paralysis. The polio virus was common in the U.S. and in other countries in the 1900s, especially in babies and young children, due to their undeveloped immune systems. Polio epidemics occurred all over the world, and in 1953, over 50,000 cases of polio were reported in the U.S. The virus continued to infect people in many parts of the world until 1957 when a vaccine became available. Polio is now rarely contracted in the U.S. and is only present in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Nigeria. On June 23, 1940, Wilma Rudolph was born prematurely, weighing only 4.5 pounds, to her parents Ed and Blanc Rudolph in St. Bethlehem, Clarksville, Tennessee. She was the 20th child of 22. Rudolph had a hard childhood. Growing up, she suffered from many childhood illnesses, including pneumonia, chickenpox, measles, mumps, scarlet fever, and polio. Because Rudolph's family was so poor, her mother and siblings took care of her most of the time. If Rudolph needed to go to the hospital, her mother would have to drive her to a hospital two hours away in Nashville, Tennessee, where the closest hospital for blacks was located. This was an expensive and time-consuming trip for Rudolph's family. At the age of five, Rudolph contracted polio and was unable to walk by herself until the age of 11. It was believed that she would never walk again, but Rudolph refused to listen to her doctors and was determined to prove them wrong. One day, when Rudolph was 11 years old, her mother found her outside playing basketball. From that day forward, Rudolph no longer needed the help of a brace to walk. Rudolph once said, My doctor told me I would never walk again. My mother told me I would. I believed my mother. In 1953, Rudolph entered Burt High School. By this time, her health had improved so much that she was able to join the track and field team and play on her school's basketball team. She excelled in these sports, especially in track and field. In high school, Rudolph experienced segregation on the track team. When traveling to meets, Rudolph was forced to travel separately from her teammates and stay in a different hotel because of the Jim Crow laws. Rudolph stayed focused on her running and didn't let the unfair treatment she was shown affect her athletic performance. Despite the segregation Rudolph experienced in high school, she still accomplished great things. Some of her greatest high school achievements were competing in the East Tennessee Conference Championship and competing in the 1956 Summer Olympic Games in Melbourne, Australia. At the time of the Games, she was 16 years old, the youngest member of the U.S. Olympic track and field team at that time. In her race, the 4x100m relay, she and her team won a bronze medal, which would be the first of many Olympic medals for Rudolph. Rudolph entered Tennessee State University in 1957 with the intent of majoring in elementary education and focusing most of her time on her studies. Despite her intentions, she spent most of her free time in college running. She made the university's track and field team and was ready to achieve great things. In her junior year of college, with much practice and the help of her coaches, Rudolph was ready to compete in the upcoming Summer Olympic Games. The year was 1960 and the whole world was waiting in anticipation for the Summer Olympic Games in Rome, Italy. Athletes from all over the world were waiting for their chance to prove that they were the best in their sport or event, and Wilma Rudolph was one of them. In these games, Rudolph would compete in the 4x100m relay, 
the 200 meter sprint, and the 100 meter sprint. In Rudolph's first race of the games, the 4 by 100 meter relay, Martha Hudson would start and pass the baton to Lucinda Williams, who would pass it to Barbara Jones, who would then pass it to Rudolph, who would finish the race. Rudolph brought her team from behind to finish first with a time of 44.5 seconds. This was Rudolph's first Olympic gold medal. Rudolph's next race was the 200 meter sprint. She finished first, well ahead of the other runners, with a time of 24 seconds, a new Olympic record. Her final race was the 100 meter sprint. She finished first with an impressive time of 11 seconds. What Rudolph accomplished in the 1960 Olympics would be remembered for many years to come. She became the first American woman to win three gold medals in one single Olympics. Rudolph's performance in the 1960 Olympics brought her great fame. When people heard what Wilma Rudolph, a black woman from a small poor town in Tennessee had accomplished, they were in awe. People were inspired by Rudolph and what she had proved which was that anything is possible if you want it badly enough and put in the hard work. After the 1960 Olympics, Rudolph used her success to change her hometown of Clarksville, Tennessee. There was still a lot of segregation against African Americans in her hometown at that time, and Rudolph wanted to change that. She hoped that by refusing to attend any celebrations for her that were not integrated, she could help to change her town. Her plan worked and her homecoming parade and banquet became the first non-segregated events in her hometown. Rudolph was a hero in her hometown. In 1963, at the peak of her career, Rudolph retired from running forever, but her story doesn't end there. It was Palo Alto, California, Stanford University, Russia versus the United States. I was running well but the heart wasn't there anymore. I mean, what do you do when you win all of it? To keep yourself motivated, you have to be a little bit hungry to be there and stay there and to stay on top. And this particular day, we were running a relay. We were behind when we started off. And you always think on a stagger start, and you know on a stagger start that, okay, she's gonna catch her in the turn, and by the time the baton is passed, we are gonna be even. But that didn't happen. And then when they pass it the next time, I said, well, by the time they get to the next person, we will be even or we will be one step ahead. It didn't happen. And by the time it got to me, I saw that we were behind. And I made myself a, a promise that day. I said, if, if you catch the Russian, it's history of retire. If you do not catch the Russian, you will have to run another four years for the Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. I caught the Russian. <laughs> In 1964, Rudolph graduated from college with a degree in elementary education. She went on to teach as a second grade teacher at Cobb Elementary School, and she was asked to coach track at her former high school, Burt High School. After her Olympic career, Rudolph became very passionate about helping others. She became a goodwill ambassador to Africa, and she participated in Operation Champion, which is a program that trains young athletes from poor areas. One of her greatest accomplishments, according to Rudolph, was starting the Wilma Rudolph Foundation. The foundation is a community-based, nonprofit outreach program that helps train young athletes. Today, the Wilma Rudolph Foundation continues Wilma's legacy by providing resources to assist young athletes in reaching their goals, academically and professionally. In 1983, Rudolph was voted into the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame and in 1994, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Tragedy struck Rudolph again in 1944 when she died from brain cancer at the age of 54. Rudolph will be remembered for many years to come, not just for her accomplishments, but for what they meant for future generations of women. She proved anything is possible with hard work and determination, and she paved the way for women in athletics. Wilma Rudolph was known by her teammates as Skeeter. She is now known and remembered as the fastest woman in the world.